Hello, welcome to a Gibbs Cam demonstration from Midwest Cam Solutions. This demonstration is going to be for the five axes uh, module from Gibbs Cam. Uh, basically, the uh, five axes module has its own tile on the machining pellet, and there's pre built strategies on the front page. So, if we were going to do spork milling, we could have predefined uh, boxes to load in for the data required. Or if you're doing cylinder head machining, importing cylinder heads, we have data, you know, exclusively for that type of machining. All these strategies simplify the need for uh, particular types of machining. If you go to general, well, then we have all the pattern strategies that are available that we can uh, define and have uh, the exact tool path that we're looking for. Uh, when you do use a pre-built one, when you go to general, it will populate the boxes with all the um, ingredients that are needed to carry it through to even add more um, options with the tool path. Well, basically this is a uh, complicated little spud part that's got a tilted flange on it. And um, we have to lathe what we can and then we put it in the five axis milling machine. The first operation here, if I double click that and go to the top view to look at it, this is a spiral tool path that we're using to rough with multiple depth steps uh, to get the, the stock out. Spiral tool path would, would allow the tool to come in and helically, spirally, and keep the tool on the part and spiral it. Um, you get the complete engagement of the tool, you can run your tool faster, there's no interrupted cuts with it. Um, to perform a tool path like this, it's quite simple. Um, I just made a surface that I want the tool to look at. And in my, uh, my uh, process, I'm using a morph between two curves. My first curve is this outer curve. My second curve is this shape of the part uh, flange area. My dry surface, of course, is that surface. And we're telling it to avoid cutting to the, uh, or actually start and end at the exact end of the surface. Um, and we're doing a spiral. A spiral is uh, spiraling, so we don't have an interrupted cut or a shift in the tool path. Um, we're going clockwise in our direction. Um, every time we do click on something and click on any button, you will see a little icon. Now, I'm just gauge checking my dry surface. Really don't need to, but I generally have it on for safety. And uh, in my links, we're um, doing a little uh, tangential arc. Um, all these different strategies for how you get in and out of your cuts very helpful when you have um, uh, powerful needs for uh, strategies for ins and outs how you can lead in and lead out of a part. Anyways, this spiral tool path is a good way of roughing. The uh, tool operation two here is doing a face mill cycle, and this is a Gibbs standard pocketing where I'm just doing a face milling back and forth, and it's going to whittle the top of that stock down. Operation three is is now going to cut this outside perimeter, and I'm using a strategy that would be for swarf milling or any contour at any angle. What's nice about the five axis parameters is you don't have to create a coordinate system. I just load in the single edge that's bottom. You can use the geometry or edges off the model, the dry surfaces. Uh, you can just select one, right click, and say select tangent faces. It groups them all up for you. We're, the area we're cutting, we're doing it by determined by a number of cuts. And we're just taking one pass and just climb cutting it. Uh, pretty standard tool path. The tool is going to be 90 degrees to the sidewall on my dry surface. And we're just going to run the tool automatic. Uh, and it's going to contour it in a five axis position. Operation four is, is uh, let me big these bodies because some of these operations I have separate bodies for them for the need. Now this is going to be a spiral tool path. Spiral tool path, this tool path, if I just kind of let it render so you can see how it's cutting it. Let's just render through here. And I can speed this up if I'd like. Let me stop this and put it at 10 steps per update. So we'll spiral this, um, all this extra stock that was there from the starting stock that they had. This is a real part that was, was machined with Gibbs Cam. 
and um, my last little roughing pass. And I've opt to stop on, so I think it's going to stop at this next operation. So if I slow it down and want to see this little face milling operation where we tilt it, we use a CS. And we're letting it just go back and forth and actually uh, rough off the stock, taking it in a few steps. We're using the back and forth so it's always climb cutting, working its way in, removing that stock off the uh, top of that part. And we contoured it. Now this is the spiral tool path that I was um, showing here, operation four. And um, you know, if you don't want to see the machine too, you can always tell it just to not show the machine. And you can just watch the tool path. But this spiral tool path is roughing the inside flange area that's tilted. And we're using the strategy uh, from the five axes, more between two curves. Of course, the first curve is the outside, second curve is this inside bottom radius. Uh, we're telling it to cut, avoid cutting the exact edges in this roughing. We are spiraling it. Um, and we're doing a five axis. We're keeping the tool 90 degrees to the dry surface and the lead angle, which is the bottom of the tool, tilt. Uh, we're pointing it five degrees and running the tool in the front. Therefore, when we can, we will cut more with the lead of the tool instead of the center of the tool. And this just does a nice job and it spirals, spirals in here. We get a really nice tool path coming in and spiraling it. Operation 5 is the same strategy, but it's using a ball end mill, and this is finishing it. Now, Operation 4 did leave um, just a little bit of stock f on the dry surface, so we have stock for the finish cut. And then Operation 6 is cutting this little spiral. Now, for this tool path, what I did, and, and if you, you know, bag all the bodies that you have in your work area, if you double click the op, it will pull out the bodies or surfaces that were used. This is a spiral tool path on the cylinder. And as this spirals, the tool needs to stay away and not hit this flange. So how we control that in five axes is with gouge check. Um, the uh, number one strategy, I generally use a dry surface check. And number two strategy, I'm telling it to tilt the tool away from the check surface. If you click this little button, you can click the surface that you want it to check and not gouge. You can also leave a little stock on that surface so it won't uh, you know, rub on it. And the report collision is a, uh, a setting that we can put this on so it'll report any collisions if there are issues. If I say redo it right now, it's going to regenerate the toolpath and tells me that no collisions were found. It's a very good, safe, secure thing that uh, will always uh, help me not um, you know, uh, be unknown if there is an issue can go back and turn the uh, show machine back on and we can watch this machine again. And machine simulation is very handy for, for verifying the spindle of the machine and all the fixturing and tooling that you'd have on that machine tool. We'll just let this uh, machine through here and, and watch it cut. Um, this part is stainless steel um, with the speeds and feeds that we running it. it gives us our cycle times. Um, it's, we're only holding on to it to a little spud there because of the, the need of the part. Now I get the op stop on. We'll surface that, we'll spiral, cut the, the back of that. And you can position this in any way you want to look at it. And again, if I hide that machine, it allows me to not have obstacles in the way of viewing. But you can see all that tool path is cutting with the front of the tool and keeping that back side up in the air a little bit and cutting more with the lead of the tool. And uh, once this roughs this diameter down, then the ball end mill comes in here now and starts cutting that whole surface. And that's just taking ten thousandths off and cleaning that all up. Again, you can go back to the machine if you'd like. zoom in on it and watch it cut. Now the uh, next tool path, the last tool path, is going to remove all that stock on that uh, shaft. And the uh, tilt uh, gouge check, it will stay normal to that surface 
till it goes to the surface that it is checking not to hit. Then the axis will, will tilt accordingly to protect it. it it's amazing when uh, you see these tool paths and uh, how precision and, and uh, intelligent they are for uh, tool path strategies. So here we're just kind of doing a normal spin. It's just spinning right on this on this shaft right now. We're doing a spiral on it. And when this tool shaft starts seeing this part, it'll start tilting. Now it's getting pretty close. Let me see if I can position it so you can kind of see where it would hit. It would have hit there. You see it kind of move down. The uh, axis on the B axis is moving down to satisfy the gouge checking. So the tool does not hit that. You can run four different uh, gouge check strategies for complicated uh, items. You might want to gouge check a fixture or a part face or whatever it is. Um, it gives you the full control for simultaneous five axis machining and protecting your part. And we'll let this finish up here and this will pretty much conclude the little five axis presentation. But uh, five axis is also a great tool for three axis events, for spiraling, uh, morphing between two surfaces. It automatically offsets and protects the tool and cuts the exact edges. You can also use it for augers, feed screws, worm gears, pretty much anything and everything in the machining world. The five axis module is uh, a great, uh, powerful tool for aerospace or complicated machining parts. And uh, that's pretty much all done here now in our part sitting in the machine. Anyways, this concludes the little presentation. I hope you enjoyed the presentation of the 5-axis Gibbs Cam. Thank you and have a great day.